Thanks for joining me for another Todd Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. Before we get to our topic of today, I would like you to take this pre-assessment of 10 questions. And what I ask is that you just answer them as best as you can. I will place them on the video for five minutes. If you need more time, you can simply just pause the video.
what'd you do? More than likely, you didn't have answers that were satisfying to you or answers that were definitive. You had a lot of guesses, you had a lot of opinions, and sometimes you may not have had any response. These are what are known as unanswered questions. And in school, we don't have a whole lot of unanswered questions. Most of the questions that we ask, we expect to be answered. And then we assess students whether they know this or not. And so oftentimes when we in school, we ask kids questions that have answers to them. But we know that in real life, oftentimes there aren't answers to questions or there are questions that are asked that simply we don't know the answer to. So we can't possibly answer with any definitive you know, uh, answer. So unanswered questions is the icon that we're going to be talking about today. And here's a few questions about unanswered questions. So one is, what has not been explored, proven, or understood about the topic? So sometimes people have unanswered questions simply because they don't know. So if they do a little research, they ask Alexa, or they, you know, they, um, you know, investigate a little bit, they might find an answer. But there's also a lot of questions out there that will never be understood or never know, or maybe not known in our time. So we won't know the effects of COVID for many, many, many years. So we don't have an answer on what this is going to do to our, our world in general. Um, we can speculate, we can guess, we can theorize, but we don't know the answer yet because it is yet to override. The second question is, how is this information incomplete or lacking in explanation? So sometimes we ask questions that we simply don't have all, all the possible puzzle pieces to. I want you to think of it like a puzzle. And you have all these pieces that fit together and form the picture of your answer. But sometimes these puzzles don't have all the pieces. Uh, historical mysteries are a great example. We speculate a lot about what happened hundreds and thousands of years ago because we didn't have the technology we have today to record it. We didn't even have written language. And so as a result, what happens a lot is that we simply lack the information we need to explain. So when you look at something like the Egyptian pyramids, we know what the Egyptian pyramids were built for. We know what their, what their, um, what their purpose was. We don't know how they were built. It's still perplexing to us with it, with the technology that they had back then. How is it possible that they were able to make this ginormous pyramid out of these ginormous stones and make it almost a perfect square. And so this is unknown. It will probably will remain unknown unless some archaeologists uncover some tomb that has the hieroglyphics written, which we don't know of hieroglyphics either. So we may never know the answer. Uh, and that can be frustrating because we, we like answers. Um, and yet sometimes there are just situations where we're never going to find an answer because it's lacking and in, in, uh, it's incomplete, the information is incomplete, or you just don't have a good explanation for it. The last question is what conclusions need further evidence? You can certainly have opinions. Opinions are a form of an answer, but opinions are not definitive. So if you ask someone what is their favorite color, some people might say green, some might people say red, some might say blue, and sure, more people might say a certain color than another color, but there's no definitive answer. Everyone's answer is their own. And so we can't come to a conclusion that there is a favorite color or what is the favorite color of everyone. And so we need to, to come to the conclusion that if this is just going to be based on opinion and that we are not going to get to the point where we're going to have an answer. So if you, if you were taking an assessment in class and they said, what is the favorite color? You would not be able to give an answer because there is no definitive answer. It's based on opinion. But even when we have an opinion, we like to have evidence to back up. So if you say my favorite color is green and my favorite color is green, the evidence is is I like I like grass. I love baseball and I love to see the baseball field, which is totally green. And that has made me love the color green. So you've used evidence to, sh to express your opinion, but it's still not a definitive answer. Uh, sometimes you can look for evidence that will give you fill in more of those puzzle pieces that I was talking about before. Um, but you're still never going to have a complete puzzle. And there's going to be times where you're never going to have a complete puzzle. And as a result, we'll still keep wondering what those answers are going to be or what the possibilities might be. So because 
the question doesn't necessarily just have answer, a definitive answer, there might be different perspectives. So taking the example of the favorite color before, if you ask one person what their favorite color, you're going to get their perspective. If you ask another person what their favorite color, they may give you another answer because their perspective is different. Even those that have the same answer may have the same the answer for different reasons. And so one thing we really have to look at when we look at unanswered questions is what are the possible perspectives? Where is this coming from? They always say that there's two sides to every story, but oftentimes there's three, four, 15, 1,000. There could be a lot of different perspectives going on with this particular question. So let me simplify this by asking one of the age old unanswered questions that exist, which is, which came first, the chicken or the egg? So there are two perspectives here. One side takes that the egg came first and their rationale would be, well, the egg came first because you can't have a chicken unless it hatches from an egg. And so that's a very logical explanation. It makes perfect sense. Is it a definitive answer? It is not because we, we simply don't know. The other side of the argument is that the chicken came first. And they can make an equally as logical response, which is that the chicken had to come first because there had to be something that laid the egg in the first place. And so you can see the dilemma here in that you have two perspectives. Both seem very logical. Both make a lot of sense, but neither one is a definitive answer. And so this is often what happens with unanswered questions is that we have to look at questions and try to figure out what are, to have a better understanding of them, we need to say, what are all the perspectives involved here? Have we considered this person's perspective or this perspective or that perspective? And you try to put all those perspectives together to give your perspective. And that can be very tricky. Uh, and again, it's not a definitive answer, but it is definitely your perspective. So you could do a lot of things with this icon with your students, because even if you're teaching math, uh, where it seems like there's always a definitive answer, that's not always the case. There are some unanswered questions. Even with science, which has scientific law, um, there are scientific theory as well. Well, we're not quite sure what, what, whether something is, is happens or not. A perfect example of how time, over time, how this can change is originally we thought that the sun revolved around the earth and that was what everyone accepted and that was what most people claimed because that's what they were told and that's what they learned and it made sense. But eventually Copernicus discovered that it was the earth that actually went around the sun. All of a sudden, not all of a sudden, it took you know a little while, um, people started to understand that it was actually that that was the correct way that we know of. Maybe you know another 100 years from now or 10 years from now or even a year from now, we'll find something different. So this is that, that, that um, example of adding evidence. So as we, as more evidence is revealed to us, the more we're going to understand something. Although sometimes we can have evidence revealed and we, we understand less about something because like the perspectives uh, point of view, where you look at someone else's perspective and where they're coming from, and all of a sudden your answer is not as definitive as you once thought. You're considering someone else's perspective as well. So there could be lots of things that you could do with students with these unanswered questions. Here's an example of some questions that you might ask them, your students and have them ponder. So should you be rewarded for your efforts in school? Isn't learning for learning's sake good enough? Do you have to get grades? Do you have to get rewards? Do you have to you know, have honor roll? Do you have to have all of these things in order to for you to give an effort in school? And of course, different kids are going to have different responses. Some will say, yes, we're learning for the sake of learning. And others will say, well, I'm not going to learn that unless you give me something for it. And so you're, you're going to get a lot of different responses in there. What is the best flavor of ice cream? This is certainly an opinion question, but I'm sure there are some students that will staunchly defend their position on the, the best ice cream and why it's their favorite. And so kids can get very passionate about defending their, their answer. But it's important that they understand the perspective of other answers. So, for example, if you are someone who your favorite flavor is um, co a cookie dough and someone else, though, is allergic to chocolate. And so they can't have that. So obviously their perspective is going to be different. They can't have the cookie dough with the, the chips, the chocolate chips in it because they're allergic to it. And so that may give you another perspective it's like, oh, I can see why they wouldn't like it because of that reason. 
an interesting one, especially as of late, is does do we control technology or does technology control us? And this is, you know, we have our, our phones and we use our phones, but we actually like like Pavlovian's dog, when our phone goes off, we, we check it, we do certain things with it. Our, our phones are kind of controlling us. You could certainly make an argument for that. And other people would say, no, I control my phone and what I do. But there could definitely be an argument made for multiple sides of that particular question. There are really, really far reaching questions that you can ask. That, and you, you, know, you want to be careful about asking certain types of like religious questions or political questions. But like, do we have a soul? So we're told that we have a soul. We're told that it exists. But is there any proof, any evidence that shows we that we have a soul? Do we see a soul leaving someone's body when they pass away? And the answer, of course, is no. And so this becomes an issue of belief. We believe that we have a soul. We want to believe that we have a soul, but not necessarily. It may not necessarily be the case. I, I, I'm, I'm, well, there's another one that you can ask your question, your students, which is like, why do we look for answers for questions when we know that there's not one available? So philosophers study these questions for you know their whole careers. There are rabbis that study you know, religious questions for their entire existence. And they never do come to a definitive answer. And so why, why do we spend so much time as a society trying to find the truth to answers to questions that we don't have answers to, and we're never going to have answers to. And so that's a really interesting one in that, again, you know, because it's, it, we were curious because we want to know, even though we may not know, um, you know, that, that's going to, that may be something that drives us. So I want to leave you with this question because we're talking about unanswered questions and there may be an, you're, you know, there's going to be your perspective, your answer for this particular one, but here's the question. Not every question has an answer. We've already established that, right? But does every answer have a question? So that can be something that you ask your students and have them think about that.